Virginia Military Institute in the 1840s and 50s. He was a graduate of West Point himself. He was uh, kind of a failure as a soldier, but he did get a job teaching at the uh, military institute, so therefore he you know, wore a uniform, but he was no longer a member of the United States military, being uh, you know, working for the state of Virginia. Every day he would go home to his house about five or six blocks away from campus. He would take a chair, put it in the corner of the room facing the corner. His family might be out here, his wife and daughter are out here doing whatever they're doing in the house. And I've been in his actual parlor. He'd sit there and for hours and hours he would memorize word for word what he was going to say the next day by memorizing it directly from a book. Then he'd go into class the next day and he would start his lecture by repeating exactly word for word what was in the book. He never missed a word. His students knew that he was doing this and so they would raise their hands and interrupt him third of the way into what he was saying because they knew that he had to rewind, they could tell that he was rewinding in his mind the spot in the chapter where the answer was and he'd get back to that and he would just repeat that part in the chapter to answer the question and then he got so discombobulated he had to start the lecture over from the beginning uh. and the students kept on doing that to him. They hated him so much as a teacher that one time, if you know about the uh, Virginia Military Institute, it's got this beautiful facade there at the campus that looks like a castle almost and of course you can walk on the top of it and one time students he was walking by and they threw bricks down on him Aww. yeah oh wow but he kind of uh had a different job after he uh was teaching there uh in uh, 1861 he joined the army of northern virginia as a colonel he fought at the battle first battle of bull run uh, where he commanded the second virginia and one of the other Confederate commanders, General Bernard B., said when he saw Thomas Jackson standing there, he said to his own men, Man, don't run! Look at Jackson! He's standing there like a stone wall! And that rallied his men to go up and join Thomas Jackson's troops, the 2nd Virginia, and from that point on, he was known as Stonewall, Stonewall Jackson. Awesome. But that's how terrible of a teacher he Mom, was. Mom, I was saying that thing. Awesome. You told, told us about that in class. Did I really? Uh -huh. I can't believe I did because it takes so much time to tell that story. But it is one of those things that you I don't kinda, forget. I actually remember because I remember you saying the students didn't yeah, like him. Didn't like him. A terrible I don't know teacher, if you told yeah. the entire thing, but most of them. Yet, uh, you know, it's probably one of the greatest uh, military minds in American okay. history. Amazing. And again, like you said, that would have been incredibly disrespectful to interrupt him and to do throw that. bricks and, on him. Well, yes. and everything else too. Well, back in the Middle Ages, when the first university started up in places like Vienna and uh, Prague and Paris, uh, you know, this is when they were just coming into the Renaissance period, and there was a demand for education by people. They wanted to know how to read, and and eventually there's a demand to have books, and so Gutenberg's going to have to invent the printing press, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and the necessity is the mother of invention. But uh, in, um, in Prague, which is now in Czechoslovakia, and at that time been in the Holy Roman Empire, the college students there had a tradition that if they didn't like their teacher, they would throw him out the window of the classroom. I remember you telling And, that. of course, in architecture, the placement of windows is called fenestration. Okay. And so they would literally defenestrate their teachers. That's why at Hack, I always insist on getting a classroom on the first floor. <laughs> so if they throw you out, you don't have too far to fall. I wouldn't, I mean, getting defenestrated doesn't even right. sound good. <laughs> See, I like the fact that I have no windows in my classroom at all, which is You're even lucky, perfect because you, you can't throw me anywhere. <laughs> we could throw you up against the wall and see Well, it yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I probably would. <laughs> but anyway, but very nice. Good, good, good.